Okay. Good luck this Sunday morning and come again. And for those of you who are over there, uh, if this is blocking you, you're welcome to move over here. Um, if there are MTV IT seats and they're not here, you're welcome to use them. It's Sunday, come again. Good morning. Wait, you gotta pull it in for three seconds. I heard um, you uh, shut down the party last night, Missy. I guess I did. Nice job. Did you like nap and rally? No, I, I, had, I went out to Little Italy oh, area, yes. uh, and it was like, I'll come back later. I expected you to come back a lot earlier, but getting across the water and back is, when you don't know Boston, was definitely a thing. There's some construction. Yeah, that's yeah. what I heard. There's tunnel shut down. Yes. So yeah, but you were out there dancing and DJing. Yeah, uh, at one point, we were jumping so much, I saw the DJ holding his equipment like this. <laughs> and he's like, you did this! <laughs> But you, missed, you missed some lap dances before you got there. Oh, there was a yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Come again. Um, good morning. Awesome. How's your con been? Oh, it's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's been great. It's been... Look, we didn't... Listen, we, when we wrapped, it was crazy. We didn't even get a wrap party. We just... It, it, there was a dust storm happening at the studio. And we were like, oh, of course, you know, this is how we wrap up 100 in the middle of a global pandemic shutting the whole world down. That makes sense. It's 100. <laughs> so it felt right, I guess. But we, we didn't really get to celebrate the show. So it's just been really nice to be here. You know, with so many of the cast and with so many of you celebrating it. It's been a thank you again for being here for everybody. Yes, thank Give you. Give yourselves a round of applause. And, and, and talk to people, and so he, he's 
trying to hit on me, and he, he, anyway, I could literally just turn around and walk away. And I had a line, which was PBR. And, <laughs> and then and that got cut because, you know, who knows why. I'm two for two with the uh, movies you guys hitting on you. First is yeah, all the Chip Monks, and now it's just I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> all right, well, let's get back to the 100. Okay. That's what everyone's here for. You know what I like about Imori is that, in addition, she was paired with Murphy, obviously, and that was everyone loved, loved you two together, and you're, we've talked a long time about your chemistry, but you were a fully realized character. I feel like, even without too much backstory, I feel like we got a lot of who we, what the essence of Amori. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so, 100%. Yeah. They, they let her live. They let her breathe. They gave her room. And it, and you, it was tough because there's so many characters on the show. You never knew if you how much story you were going to get. But I always got, you know, I got bits here and there, and then I would get an episode or two that really let us push her, her character forward. When you first appeared in the desert in that scene with Richard, that one or two episodes, at what point did they call you back and go, oh, we're going to have more glory? Um, I, they didn't call me back until the next season. But I don't know what the conversations were uh, at the time, but even after we shot that. I mean, Richard and I just met for the first time that day. We knew of each other, but we hadn't met. So we, we met that day, and we had a great day. Obviously, we worked so well together with a really fun time. And he was like, I feel like they're going to bring you back. I, I think they're coming back. And I was like, don't say that. You don't know. Like, Stop it. Don't put like ideas in my head. Right. He's like, yeah. And then did you come back? You were in three or four. When did you really come back? Three, I had six episodes. Right. Um, and then four, I think I had eight. Or, I, I and moved on up. Moved on up. Moved on up. Before we open up to Sky Questions, which is something to do all day, by the way, it's, it's Sunday, and I, we're all here for you guys. So um, I'm doing this name this TV movie. I'm going to give you a description and see if you remember it. It seems like you might. Oh, gosh. Okay. An epic storm triggered by a space phenomenon obliterates the cities, and the only answer to escaping complete annihilation rests on a small town teen and her extraordinary science project. Name this movie you were in it with another person from the hundred. Mega Cycle. Mega Cycle with Eric and Sarah. <laughs> That's what we met too. Oh wow. Was this just one of those TV movies you did? Oh yeah, it was old TV movie. Just, you know, the the red spot on Jupiter has disappeared and reappeared on Earth and it's causing havoc. Your kind of genre. It's my I guess so. No. Do you like doing romantic comedies and comedies? Do you like doing sci-fi? Like is there a certain you just like all of it? I love sci-fi, but I do I I like I have tried my stuff. Yeah. And I also the, one of the characters I played after the hundred was uh, so bubbly and fun. I was like, "Wow, this is different. <laughs> this is not like she was just happy and making jokes and like working in tech and like." So what is what's this space? <laughs> this is different. And so many actors in the hundred go. I got to be clean and happy. Yeah, under seven years. Yeah. <laughs> um, one last question before I open up, which is. Um, Okay, you're upcoming in Van City, obviously, yes. set in Vancouver. Uh -huh. You're with Sachin and Bethany Brown. Yes. Tell us more about Van City and when that's coming out. So Van City is still a pitch. Oh. So it's it's, an early, it's early days, uh, but we're excited about it. We put it on my MDB and all that. Um, but it's it's early days. Okay. So we'll see. But stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. Yes. And um, obviously the fans will ask you, but uh, really quick, tell us about your book club and what you're doing on Instagram. Okay. So I am. As maybe some of you know, I, I have been posting, I don't generally don't post very much on Instagram in the past. I, like, I want to do something that I that feels good to me. Um, I like reading, and so I started a book club. It's called the Feed Your Mind Book Club, and it is to feed your mind. It's books that either expand the way you see the world or expand the way you see yourself. They're non-fiction books, we do one a month. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, discuss, share my thoughts at the end, and I hope people who read it comment. Uh, and if you're just looking for good books, maybe you don't want to read with us. Maybe you're busy. You know, there's going to be an offering every single month, a suggestion. And this month, Chris Larkin and I are doing it together. And what's the book? The book is The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion. Yes. Uh, it's a, it's a little bit heavy because uh, it does deal with grief and loss, uh, but. You know what? That's life. And certainly, I think grief and loss have been a theme that can connect to everybody, right? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think so. I think it's a good choice, yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to line up the microphone. We're going to have a chill Q&A session with Louisa. Um, and by the way, Louisa is engaged. Let's give her a chill Q&A session. I saw a ring last time, I'm like, oh, hey, yeah. nice. <laughs> I just served 
things, I just, yeah, just wear it. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're chill. Yeah. Hi, welcome. Good morning. Hi. Nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you too. So my question is, do you have a current show you're binging right now? I mean, whatever the boys' episodes come out, I just finish those immediately. Um, so dark, so depraved. Oh my gosh, what the heck? I love it. <laughs> it's hilarious because like, I love Marvel, but I like making fun of Marvel, and so the boys is perfect for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the boys. Thank you. Good morning. This is more like a statement more than a question. But I just want to say thank you for playing the board so well over the years. Being a disabled person myself, it's hard to identify with a character with such strength and immortality and resilience, you know, and getting what he wants. And having a good strong relationship with that. But not but in a permanent color too. So thank you. Thanks, Evelyn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I really want to follow that. That was so sweet. Um, my question was, is there a question that you get asked all the time that you're tired of asking? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> What is there a question you want to get asked that you don't get asked? Oh, um, I, I wouldn't mind if people are asked about the process. Asking the process. What is the acting process? <laughs> <laughs> you know, every actor has to find their own way into it. Um, and it's funny, it's, acting is a little bit like therapy. Because the places that you bump up against are usually places that you have things you need to deal with. Because there's resistance to go there. Um, and there's a catharsis that happens when you overcome those areas of resistance. And it's like you feel a door opening inside you and, and letting real things come out. Um, and, and uh, I don't know, it's like a puzzle. It's, a, it's like a puzzle that you're fig where you're figuring out yourself as you're doing it. Um, maybe I, sh I should have, I don't know if I have a good answer to the whole question. That's, just, <laughs> that's a pretty good answer. All right. Yeah. Last thing, I'm glad someone has brought a problem that you're like, so I didn't seem crazy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I'm short. Um, What's your favorite memory from set, and then what's your favorite memory with Richard Harmon? I, I mean, ugh, there's so many wonderful memories from set. Um, there was one moment where it was right at the end of filming. Uh, we were, there was a whole bunch of us on set, we were doing a big group scene, uh, and we were all sitting in a tent uh, out in the woods somewhere, you know, waiting for the shot to be ready which can take a while sometimes. Uh, and we, we were playing um, that game where you go through that, like there's a category you go through the outfit and everybody has to say what, like it's like hockey teams and then you start at A and you have to say go through whatever. Food, anything, cities. Um, and we started getting so riled up and we were cheering and shouting and such it was, you know, going wild and Lindsay and everything was just, you know, big energy. And we, we couldn't shut up. And every time someone couldn't think of something and then they finally got it, we'd go, ah, and cheer. Finally the crew came over and was like, what the heck is going on? It sounds like there's a football game happening around the corner. Like, you guys gotta shut up. We're trying to work over here. That was a really fun, really special moment. It was right near the end. And I think we just all had to let something out. Every single moment where we've also been like in the rain and the cold and you know you're miserable at the time physically but you're so happy to be working and uh, those 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 moments were also really special. And then with Richard, oh my gosh, um, how do I pick one? I'll just maybe I'll share 
of the very last day on set, the very last shot. Uh, that day we shot our, our, the scene in the mind space, um, that beautiful scene that we had. And, um, and then the very last shot was when we came, like, the balls of flight, basically. And we, you know, we're, we're standing around and we wonder, we knew it was the last shot, but we didn't know if they got it. And so in a second they said, okay, we got it. We both just looked at each other and like the charge of, that's it. That's it. That was it. That was the last one. And we both just started crying and like hugged each other and just said like, thank you. Thank you. It was sweet. It was, we, we really took care of each other. Very, very nice to hear. In this industry, you don't hear stories like that as much. They don't get, you don't get the positive stories like that, the friendships that are forged. Yeah, yeah it was, it was very special. We were very lucky. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Also, great cosplay. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so my question was, uh, speaking of book club earlier, um, what would be your top three book? either your favorite books or your book recommendations to people? Uh, this is a great question. Um, <clears throat> I always recommend Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Frankl. It's a really heavy book, but man, it will like, it shifts your perspective on life, like permanently. Um, uh, I really like uh, Malcolm Gladwell, and I'd probably say Blink might be my favorite of his, but he's got a ton of great books. And um, I mean, can I just, Say like a Jane Austen anthology. <laughs> I love Jane Austen. You have to have a class. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, just a question for when COVID began. Um, what were some TV shows and movies you watched when it first began? Oh my gosh, I can't even. Like just, I think I went into the documentary rabbit hole on Netflix and. <laughs> Uh, probably rewatched the entire Marvel series. Um, I think I even went as far as going through all the old school Disney movies. And, uh, a lot, a lot. Um, <laughs> I think mostly the documentaries, the, the Netflix documentaries, The Pharmacist, uh, The Staircase, yeah. Brutal. Yeah, a lot of those. All right, thank you. Thanks. Did you watch The Staircase on HBO recently, the new? No, the, it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. Tony Collette, that's what I need to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just wanted to ask, after the show ended, did you ever put your tattoo on? <laughs> no, because I don't know how to do that. I'm not good enough. Um, although the, the makeup artist who did my makeup in the final season and I actually became really good friends, She's my workout buddy now. We go to the gym. Um, she uh, she gave me some of the like, uh, transfers they're called. Yeah. So if I was, I could do it. You could do it cosplay yourself. I could. Yes. Yeah. Maybe the next time. Show up with it at the party. Yeah. 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 I never try though. I'm scared to try. Show up and see how many people actually think you're a warrior. Yeah. You look so much like the girl who played the warrior. Yeah. Yeah. See if they think you're cosplaying or. If that's a good idea. It's, the, it's like the year that um, Brian Cranston was at Comic Con and he put on a, a Heisenberg hat and mask and walked around Comic Con and people like thought it, it was just the guy playing him and it was him. Amazing. That's the way to do it. Um, good morning. Good morning. Um, my question is if Corey had the chance to go to college, what would you like? What do you think she would major in and who of the characters do you think would be her roommate? Oh, <laughs> She would, for sure, I think, go into some kind of engineering. Uh, she just with that. She has so much experience. You know, she always was interested in tech. High tech. Big time. Yeah. Uh, she would give me it all. Let's go to MIT. Uh, and, and she would probably want to room with Raven, but she would also be like, I might need to room with Monty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, like that might be more realistic. The three of you have a gender mutual space. I'm yes. saying, like, share a big apartment. Yeah. That'd be the nerdiest apartment. It'd be great. It'd be awesome. <laughs> it would, if anyone who came in to the room would say, I don't understand what's happening in here, and I'm just going to leave. <laughs> too much, too much tech, too much engineering. 
But would you like you would date Murphy and you meet him at a party and from another college? I don't think Murphy went to MIT. I think he just crashed the party. Yeah. <laughs> maybe Murphy went to college. Maybe Murphy did yeah. go to college. He, he did, no, he, maybe he, no, you know what? He got enrolled and then he dropped out. And he, like, he somehow hacked the system so that he kept showing up on the roster as good attendance. But he never actually showed up. Don't forget to wait out to that time. He got straight A's in that hack. That's right. Right, exactly. That's right. He did. You were drawn in immediately. I was like, who's this guy? Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Good morning. Hi. Hi. I'm not matching. Oh, yeah, we are. That's right. Um, I was wondering, since the Murphy and Amori first kiss was off screen, who do you think initiated it, and how do you think that scene went? Oh. Oh, um. I've never actually thought about that. <laughs> I kind of think it might have been a glory. 100%. Yeah. So. Really? Yeah. He's, he's probably secretly terrified of you. I, mean, yeah. I did, yeah. I did, did constantly threaten his life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think they were, you know, doing, running their scam or doing their, their thing, and then, and she, the more I probably just looked at him and was like, huh, this feels different. This feels different. I love it. This feels different than working with my brother. <laughs> Between the dorm and this, we're basically writing a headcanon AU for some fan fiction. <laughs> and someone's going to write that this afternoon. Amazing. Sure. Yes. And maybe it'll be, and I'll get past a half page. There you go. <laughs> uh, and then you mentioned at last con again that you. The I Will Follow You Into the Dark by Jasmine Thompson was a good Memori song. Yes. Is there any other like song that you can think of like on your Murphy and Amori playlist or Amori playlist? Oh my gosh. Um, do I still have it? <laughs> do you? <laughs> be impressive. It's a big thing. Uh, gosh. <clears throat> I mean, that was definitely the main one. Like, I love we, that song now. We used to, we used to, um, Share. We used to share like a headset earbuds. We like have money. We like I got a song. I got a song. And then I sit there and we're like, oh yeah, that's a good one. And we're just getting the episode. Nailed it. Like your chemistry, your friendship. Uh, it just sort of it was so great because you could see that on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I oh you know what? I listened to Fix You by Coldplay. Yes. Man, because. That's what they, they fixed each other. They were just broken enough that they could understand each other and fix each other together. Yeah, that, that was a good one. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I actually don't have a question about 100, but I recently was rewatching one of my other favorite shows, which is Psych, and I saw that you were on that. Yes. <laughs> um, and so I just wanted to ask you what that experience was like as well. Super duper fun. I <laughs> Super fun. Um, so the, this episode I did uh, was called Tuesday the 17th. It was a spoof off Friday the 13th. It was a spoof horror episode where we go to a summer camp. Girlfriend, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then the, the yellow top. Wait, the camp guy counselor. was gay or something? No. I oh, I don't know. I was in a yellow. I was a camp. I was like a camp counselor. Um, and I, uh, they come to this camp, someone's missing, or, you know, the, the counselor needs help, and so, uh, you know, the two guys come to solve the crime, or do, do whatever they, they had to do. Uh, and then, you know, mystery ensues, and people end up dead, and, um, yeah, that was so fun. We basically just went to a camp for, like, a week and a half, and James Rodea and Julie Hill are hysterical. Those two are, you, you can see, like their chemistry is incredible. Dulé Hill is a really good tap dancer. Every, he just be, whenever he found a piece of plywood, it was just like, wow. Just tapping away, and you're like, man, these guys are talented. This is wild. It was super fun. So you said one episode of Psych? Just one episode. Nice. nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so I know there's always the process of getting into character. I was wondering if you had a process of getting out of character once you were done for the day. Um, showering, for sure. <laughs> uh, that always helped, because you know, you psychologically feel like you're, you're washing, washing away. Um, you know what's interesting is after a while of playing Amori, I 
it was easy for me to slide in and out. It's almost like the pathway between me and her got really short. Yeah. I could just one step and then one step. It was really interesting. And then an offshoot of that question, were there any particular days that it was very difficult to get? Yes. Um, the, in the end, the episode where I get, you know, the, the wall, like, or the building collapses on me, the bunker collapses, where, where we are, um, when I was lying on the ground and John Murphy and I had that scene where I'm like, you just need to forget it, I'm not going to make it, and he's, you're going to make it, and cauterize my wound. That was so emotional. Um, I don't know what happened in that moment when we were shooting it, but both, like, both of us just burst out crying suddenly. Uh, and I really had to, like, that, that, that was a lot of emotion coursing through, I think, both of us. So that took a lot to let go of. And then when I was lying on the gurney for a long time, I, I was just stra strapped to this gurney and with nothing, nowhere to go. Uh, and I just basically thought about if this was my last hour, what would that be like? I had like an existential day. <laughs> I just sat there thinking about death for 12 hours. I've never done that before. It was intense. I like white places. Okay. I, I don't know where I went, but it was not planet Earth. Thank you. Um, we, actually, we have time for unfortunately one more question, and then um, I was told that there are girls have kind of gathered a photo that we have for you, so we'll do this. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. schedule. Thank you. Um, hi, I had a question about book club actually. Sure. Um, so I know you said you guys are doing nonfiction books, but I'm going to grad school for library sciences, so I'm always looking for good recommendations. If you were going to do a fiction book for your book club, what would be your choice? Oh gosh. Um, a fiction book um, that, that everyone hasn't already read. Um, oh no. Okay. Have, have you heard of the Grace Lane series? I heard of it. It's very popular in my library, so I, I never get my hands on a copy. I will read the Grace Lane series. It's great. Yes. Thank you. Oh, 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 gosh. What is, what is that? Um, see, I'm so bad. I gotta check my phone. Uh, it's, okay, there's, I think. Do your thing. It's, um, this is a, like, crazy ancillary justice. That's what it's called. And celery justice. This is it's like sci-fi on steroids. Okay. It's like way in the future, total alternate world. Like humans are everywhere. Um, there's there's the Reich. The, the whole you know universe is run by this Reich that the person who runs it basically has bodies everywhere, and they are but the one person. Um, and your main character is an AI. And there's, I can't even begin to like, it, it, it's, it's wild. It's a three book series. And I was like, what am I reading? And I can't stop reading. It, ancillary Justice. Awesome. Just Thank you so get much. that sci-fi in your face. Let's give it up for Louisa. Thank you so much. For your support over the years. I can't tell you how much it means to all of us. It, it means everything to us. It really does. Thank you.